During the 19th and early 20th centuries, much of the commerce between the cities on Green Bay and Milwaukee, Chicago, and the lower peninsula of Michigan passed by ship through the Death's Door Passage. By now you probably know that Death's Door may have gotten its name due to the shifting currents, changing weather, and hidden shallows that made it such a hazardous passage. But the power of commerce was such that in the 19th century, wooden sailing schooners transited the passage nearly every day when it was clear of ice. The ships would carry to market goods such as furs, lumber, grain, farm produce, fish, and even Christmas trees. Meanwhile, passenger steamers traveled up and down the west shore of Lake Michigan. This much traffic in such dangerous waters meant that ships were wrecked with disturbing frequency. There have been at least 213 shipwrecks identified and cataloged in nearby waters, which, according to some historians, is the most of any body of fresh water in the world. One wreck is just off the north shore of Plum Island. In early November 1867, the grape shot, a 131-foot-long schooner, ran aground. She ran aground so forcefully that her bow was raised four feet out of the water. Fortunately, no lives were lost, but after several attempts at recovery, the grape shot was declared a loss. She rests now in eight feet of water and is visible in the clear water to divers and kayakers. A small white float indicates her location. With wrecks like the grape shot being all too common, it's not surprising that Congress directed the U.S. Life-Saving Service to establish a life-saving station on Plum Island. And in April 1896, the Plum Island Life-Saving Station began operation. The station was built to a standard style for the Life-Saving Service, a design called the Duluth Style. The first example of this style was built on Lake Superior in Duluth, Minnesota. Fifteen Duluth-style stations were built on the Great Lakes. The one you see in front of you is the only one remaining. The Duluth-style stations are recognizable for their central four-story watchtower and a two-bay boat room. The station building housed the life-saving crew, called Surfmen. It was their job to rescue crews in distress by setting out in specially designed open boats, which were generally only about 25 feet long. The surfmen were lifesavers, not lighthouse men. Although they cooperated extensively with their lighthouse keeping colleagues, they did not operate or maintain any lights. A hiking path along the water around the island follows the patrol path that crews had to walk daily around the island watching for endangered ships. In front of the life saving station, you'll see a large boathouse. This boathouse was built in 1939 during the Roosevelt administration, so its type of construction is called the Roosevelt type. It was built after the boat bays in the life-saving station were enclosed to provide more sleeping area. 1939 was also the year that the U.S. Coast Guard took over life-saving and lighthouse duties. The life-saving station building, the boathouse, and the dock were all operated by the U.S. Coast Guard until 1991. Today, the structures have been stabilized to slow further deterioration, and the Friends of Plum and Pilot Islands operate in partnership with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to preserve them. Restoration is an objective, but considerable work needs to be done. Substantial money needs to be raised to make this possible. While the buildings remain shuttered, Plum Island is open to the public for hiking during the summer months but visitors must arrive by a small boat that can be beached or anchored offshore. Until restoration is completed, the dock is unsafe for public use.